Star Wars Andor is a pretty unique show in comparison to the Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, and Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi. While I really love those series, especially The Mandalorian, I think that's the best one, Star Wars Andor really is distinct in its pacing, the way it writes its characters, the focus and the structure of the show, as in comparison to many of their other action-packed series. And I really wanted to do sort of a review analysis today of this series, which I have mixed feelings on. And so I'm going to be talking about the series in total, talk about the characters, all of the kind of important plot points, so there will be spoilers. I warned you guys now, so yeah, it's going to be filled with com completely a lot of spoilers so you have been warned so let's go into the plot of this of the series first The series explores a new perspective from the Star Wars galaxy, focusing on Cassian Andor's journey to discover the difference he can make. The series brings forward the tale of the burgeoning rebellion against the Empire and how people and planets become involved. It's an era filled with danger, deception, and intrigue where Cassian will embark on the path that is destined to turn him into a rebel hero. The story essentially actually takes place a little bit before the Star Wars Rogue One uh, film, and it takes place I think like 10 or, I don't know, like 5 or 10 years before the events of Star Wars A New Hope. With Cassian Andor being the primary protagonist of the series, I feel Diego Luna's performance as this character was somewhat adequate. As a leading man and important figure in the development of the Rebellion, being a spy, a leader, being a fighter, the character of Cassian Andor is, at this point, not very unique and not very memorable at this point, to be honest with you, with the performance. I really can't give you great details about him as he really is just your standard hero who is the roguish type that at first is very much not even interested in being a rebel whatsoever and he wants to be on his own and then he's convinced over time but I I guess it's it's fine as a performance as it is. Diego Luna I think is a fine enough actor. I haven't really seen him in other films before other than like Elysium and he does good enough work in this series. But with all that said, I think he just satisfies the role as this rebel hero, and for this season, he isn't really that exceptional. I know this might be a uh, not a fair comparison, but to be very honest, in comparison, like for uh, for example, Pedro Pascal's char character of the Ma Mandalorian and Edwin McGregor's character as Kenobi in the Obi Wan Kenobi show, we have those series being led by great actors and great characters who stand out and are memorable in the roles. Especially Edwin McGregor, as his performance in really that series was actually really astounding. I really liked him in there in that show. Maybe it's because the way uh, casting Andor is structured. Or, I mean, Andor is structured with a lot of attention given to uh, other side characters. We're not given that much to see with Cassian being developed as a truly remarkable, memorable character. But this might be made up for in the second season, as I kind of put my hope more towards this character, even though the performance of it is okay. The best episodes, though, are, of course, when we see Cassian prove how capable and resourceful he is, such as when he robs the Imperial payroll from the hydroelectric dam in the episode where he has to work with a rebel crew gaining funding for the rebellion and when he's imprisoned and must plot with other many prisoners uh, from escaping that imperial prison actually those episodes are really fantastic as we see him really as we see Diego Luna's uh, performance really improve with those episodes seeing him being this character being Cassian trying to um, get this plan together of really convincing other prisoners, hey, there's no uh, way we're going to get out of here, we have to fight our way out. While I might be negative in my criticism again, I think that Diego Luna, again, uh, is doing his best and he's his performance is adequate to just fine enough. And the thing is, is that my criticism of that is not because he's doing a terrible job, it's just I want to see more of this character 
for me to think of him as someone who's memorable as stand out as even like in Rogue One in that film when he appears there there wasn't that much attention obviously given to him so with a series devoted to him I want to see more of his character and him grow instead of it being kind of focused on other kind of minor you know unimportant characters who uh, I guess we see in the series the story around Cassian Andor is engaging enough for me to want to see again more of him but let's see how season two will flesh him out and let's see how it will progress with the story as his importance grows in the rebellion as we see more of his leadership as we see more of his resourcefulness it's just that i really can't give you much in describing him as a deep and unique character in this first season Much of this show focuses on characters who play an important role in the development of the Rebellion. The friends and family of Cassian Andor on the planet Ferrix get a lot of coverage and we learn more about their stories. Then we get the crew of the Rebels that Cassian joins to plan the heist of the Imperial payroll to provide funding towards the Rebellion on the planet Aldani where the Rabi takes place from a hydroelectric dam. We also have the members of the Empire who are working towards finding Andor and also crushing the Rebellion before it grows into something rather serious that they have to contend with and we have Mon Mothma who is an Imperial Senator who is secretly funding the Rebel Alliance there are a lot of characters and stories that are covered in this first season and while I understand why many of the characters need to be focused on I mean we need a development of this universe and there has to be a lot of them are have to be given uh, screen time to kind of give more backstory of how the Rebel Alliance develops um, a lot of their, a lot of these characters are rather forgettable in the show, and some of them are rather uninteresting in the sense that I wish that the show didn't devote that much time to them. For example, Mon Mothma, the Imperial uh, Senator who plays the important role of funding the Rebellion, I wish the creators didn't dedicate so much time to her. I understand her importance, and I understand that we have to see from her perspective how the uh, rebellion became a lot uh, became a lot more powerful and they really started to grow in in the funding and the kind of weaponry that they developed their organization but I think seeing that from the perspective of Mon Mothma wasn't intriguing enough for me to watch as she develops her relationships with other uh, members of the rebellion as, as she convinces other people to join the rebellion her relationships to her family uh, are scenes that I don't really find very interesting as really not it doesn't go anywhere you're seeing her interactions with her husband and her daughter and I, I, I just don't care because the fact is like the actress's performance the actress who's playing Mon Mothma was fine as I could say pretty much the same thing about the rest of the other side characters and I wish again I wish it wasn't devoted too much to her kind of developing the rebellion and I know that people will argue in the comments it's important to see her Fu um, to, uh, kind of get, gain funding for the rebellion and have her be important in the organization of the rebel alliance but on the other hand i just don't see why we have to see these uh characters in there her daughter or her husband all her interactions with her family because it doesn't really play it, much of that much of importance to understanding how the rebel alliance works scar guards uh, performance and character luthan rail was pretty decent and we see him hire andor and aid the rebellion by securing deals with other spies and un other unsavory characters who have to play an important role in the rebellion uh, i think he's really a great actor Skarsgård, because he always plays himself in these movies and i really like I really liked his story. I really liked how he funded the rebellion versus how Mon Mothma was funding and aiding the rebellion. Skarsgård is a lot more uh, better actor than Mon Moth's, um, uh, the Mon Mothma actress. As really, we see him working uh, to uh, to really keep his identity secret. As he's this eccentric dealer, and he's always doing these deals with the spies. I thought his interactions with spies and other uh, kind of like pirate characters and other kind of fighters I thought that was way more important than Mon Mothma and I liked seeing him in, in uh, the role of really aiding the rebellion and doing these deals the other best actor in the show was of course Andy Serkis his character as this leader or this kind of manager of a group of prisoners in the Imperial prison uh, episodes were fantastic his character was pretty great I 
thought that his performance was absolutely fantastic. His character um, helping many of the kind of uh, uh, many of the prisoners stay in line, providing discipline, and also sooner or later also uh, um, planning with Andor and escaping the prison. I thought those were the best a a episodes, and I think the performances from him and the other actors who played the uh, the that played the. Um, played the prisoners were really great those were actually the best episodes in my opinion the two other characters who played a, a, a huge important part in this uh, in this season were of course Deidre Miro and Cyril Karn who were part of the Empire they're basically officers of the Empire with Cyril Karn he was a, a inspector and Deidre Miro I think she was a high-ranking officer of the Empire as they work together to as they as, as basically they just work to crush the empire and you see the kind of dedication and the kind of focus that many of these members of the empire have with just crushing the rebellion and being as brutal as possible as they compete with other members in the empire and i really love those scenes kind of focusing on many of the officers as you see how absolutely kind of cold and calculating these people are in hunting down the rebels Especially Deidre, who is this headstrong and stubborn individual. As you see, she wants to advance in her career within the Empire at all costs. Now, on the other hand, Cyril Karn, uh, played by Kyle uh, Solar, who is the inspector, was somewhat of a weird, creepy character who really is obsessed with his job and also is somewhat obsessed with Deidre as uh, he wants to become an inspector and he wants to he was kicked out for failing on a mission and he wants to kind of regain his position again throughout the series and i like the fact that you see him being this real creepy weirdo and he really is going to become like even a better villain i i feel in season two so the two imperial officers the two members of the empire really I think their their performances and their their characters were fascinating because we see the perspective of the Empire. That's that's what I can say about them. Is I like seeing that uh, the these villains develop as as you see how dedicated they are to destroying the rebels and really just being absolutely cold and and somewhat psychopathic in in their nature. With all that said, there are so many other minor characters that are given screen time that I feel. Their point of being on screen is to drag out the story as the writers needed to kind of add more to the universe of the story. And I can't really say anything else. I mean, even the crew that is part of, like, th that Andor is a part of with the, um, with the episodes where they are essentially in stealing the Imperial payroll, they were fine, but, I mean... I didn't see any development of them. I didn't really see that many great scenes of dialogue as I felt like it was just dragging more out with these side characters as the characters also on on the planet Ferrix, his friend, his, his adopted mother. All these scenes are fine and I understand they're somewhat filler, but once again, I felt that the, the creators could have cut down on that. And I, I don't know, it's just like, it didn't really add much of anything to it, but I understand why it was necessary uh, for those scenes, but there's really n nothing there when the characters don't have that much are uh, they, they don't have that many uh, the sort of character arcs that is given to them They're just there they exist for a little bit addition to the universe and understanding a little bit more about casting Andor And that's about it. It wasn't a huge problem and it, it didn't infuriate me But I think it just slightly irritated me that we had these kind of throwaway characters present in the first season of this show With many of the characters that I covered on the first segment of this video, the next important element of the show that I want to cover is the pacing, which is very important and I have a lot of mixed feelings about. While I'm glad there were many scenes dedicated to characters giving details about themselves in the universe, it seemed, again, that the creators of the show stretched many of those episodes out by focusing too much on these characters who weren't really that important or I guess consequential in any way to be honest with you or that weren't going to be that important even in uh, the second season of this show. I, I, I don't see why they were highly focused on. Actually the, the first four episodes of the show feel way too drawn out and I saw many people criticize the, this aspect of the show that the first four were really a kind of a chore just to get through the the kind of overly extended plotline of the of stretching this sort of 
build up to the fact that we had Cast and Andor join this crew to take out this uh, Imperial payroll at this hydroelectric dam, the lead up to it was just way too drawn out. And I, I don't know why that was added into the show, why that was overextended, because you could have just condensed it down into maybe one or two episodes. And compared, in comparison to other Star Wars shows, such as Mandalorian and the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, Andor is much more a slower show in many ways. And this actually might just be a problem with me, as I'm so accustomed to many other Star Wars series being so fast-paced and having background characters develop very quickly and without that much exposition or, I mean, th that, t that much talking done in the episodes, just un useless kind of conversations that don't really add much to the story, but just kind of drag the, sh uh, drag the episode out where you could just kind of sum these characters up very quickly. This show, on the other hand, I mean, it, I don't know, it, it does that and it, and it does develop the story, which I appreciate, but like I stated with the first four episodes of the show, the creators needlessly had to drag it out to a point where I was feeling that even with, even with a lot of the content that you needed to understand, I really didn't need that much to kind of understand what was going on, why Cassian Andor was important for the robbery, why they, they were searching for him, why uh, the funding was necessary for the rebellion, all these aspects I could have understood very quickly. And I didn't need, I didn't need it to be developed in the way that it has. Now, I could also see the advantage of it that, of course, we're learning more about the universe and I love the Star Wars universe and seeing it on screen through these episodes actually kind of like made me more appreciate the universe learning more about how the rebellion operated was fun uh, some of the facts that we see how the training was done with Cassie Andor and the kind of crew that he had to deal with to sort of carry out this heist of the Imperial uh, payroll and then when we get to the episodes the prison episodes which again we see more character development of interesting prisoner characters that I loved how they were orchestrating the plan to break out of the prison and then we see it happen those episodes were great and how we did see it extended and we saw how those characters were developed but it's just the first half of the show the first four episodes that I was thinking that's where the downside of overextending each um, episode of having all these details thrown in with with the characters talking all these conversations with Many of these people that really aren't going to really make a difference in the second season, probably going to be dropped out, cut out, are, you know, they're not going to play that much of an importance, and their acting isn't stellar enough for me to be engaged with them, and to think, wow, this, this character needs another 20 minutes of us seeing them have a conversation with another, you know, unimportant character. And though that, uh, like I stated with the way that I discussed the characters, was somewhat irritating, but it wasn't truly infuriating. I think that maybe in this in season two, as we kind of more, if the writers more focus on Cassie Nandor and Skarsgård's character and really the main characters that are important, we will see this show improve. But if they continue with the type of pacing that they have, it will become, I guess, tiring. It'll be, you'll start to kind of become exhausted because there were times I just pulled out my phone when I was not, when I was like disengaged from the story, seeing like the characters have these like pointlessly, uh, endlessly long conversations, uh, which could have been shortened. And I was thinking, oh, whatever, they're talking now about something that's really overextended. So I, I hope that in season two, it's going to be improved upon even though it wasn't again not a huge problem but especially with the first or episodes that's where you see the issues the disadvantage of having the type of pacing that the show did have in Andor. With all that stated about the characters and the pacing of the show, I have to actually do give this show a lot of positive, uh, I guess, positive marks because of the fact that I love the Star Wars universe. They didn't drag it too much out. It's not as bad as like the Book of Boba Fett where you see a lot of silly character choices and there's a lot of silly moments, even though there's 
cool moments that are, are that are all that are present within the Book of Boba Fett. It's not on that level. Andor is much more serious, long a longer show. That's you have to have the patience for. It's a lot more mature, in my opinion. And even with a lot of pointless characters that are inserted in the story and, and are, are focused on a lot and there's no need for it I still enjoyed it I still enjoyed the development of this series I'm, I'm gonna be glad that there are gonna be focusing on a season two as we get more out of Cassian Andor I know it sounds like I've been negative throughout this review but there are good things that I liked about this show that didn't absolutely make me rageful didn't make me think I want to turn this off and not watch this ever again it kept me interested it kept me wanting to focus on Andor and how this rebellion will grow and how the rebel alliance will start to attack and and begin to launch you know battles and and be, begin to fight up against the galactic empire I want to see that develop through uh, Cassian Andor's eyes through his perspective and that's what I'm looking forward to what I what I hope they will do is they'll cut out unimportant characters useless characters in season two the fo the story will be more focused it, the pacing will be a little bit faster and we won't be given so much unnecessary exposition unnecessary conversations as we'll have this story more tight and the writers will increase the level of intensity with the action and so on and so forth even though I, I don't always necessarily need like action scenes in every single episode I need some kind of I need some level of intensity. I need something on that's keeping me more invested and engaged in the story. And that's the only problem that I would say about uh, Andor as a series is that with it being so so long and overextended and having so many pointless scenes in it, I felt like there were times where I just kept pulling out my phone, not watching it, having it in the background. And hopefully season two will it will basically improve in quality as it goes on because I do love the Star Wars universe and I'm always wanting to see more uh, content added and we see more I guess I, I, I guess more aspects of the universe that we haven't seen before so if I would give this show a score I would say maybe a 76% or maybe close to maybe a 72% not bad not great but uh, uh, interesting enough for me to revisit it and say hey I'm, I'm gonna be looking forward to the next season so that, w that is my review uh, and sort of analysis of Cassie and Andor. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. I like making these types of review kind of analysis uh, videos for these uh, for these types of shows, especially Star Wars. You know, I'm a huge I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love learning more about the universe, and I am looking forward to the Mandalorian season three coming out and for Andor season two to come out. Uh, the Book of Boba Fett <laughs> that was sort of a silly show. Yes, there are a lot of problems with it, but I will be looking forward to that show in the future if they're going to make a season two of it. Uh, with that all said, thank you for watching this episode, this review. I appreciate it, and uh, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.